Hi everyone, welcome back to this midweek update. Now I want this video to be a little bit more conversational, so I may not have as many uh, slides coming in showing you the, the data or showing you the text, but I have all the link in the description box down below so that you can check out and verify the things that I claim in this video. Now, so two days ago, I saw a news and it's about Pfizer. Now they are applying the emergency use authorization for their COVID-19 vaccine uh, in children aged six months through four years old. Uh, and this is because the US FDA requested the company to do so. Now, this is very much out of the ordinary practice of FDA. And because back in December, the Pfizer announced that their two dose series failed to produce immune response in children aged two to four. And the company immediately said that they were going to add a third dose in the clinical trial uh, so that to see if there is enough uh, immune response and they did not expect to have the result sometime mid 2022. Now the FDA is asking Pfizer to submit a EUA application for the first two doses, which the company admitted that there's not enough data at this point to prove immunity. So what has happened to data-driven science and what has happened to evidence-based medicine? Now let's lay down some of the facts first. The clinical trials uh, designed in this age group is to measure the antibody level that is generated from the vaccine. And so if the vaccine can generate a similar level of neutralizing antibody in these young children and also in adult, that means uh, the vaccine would be good enough and FDA would consider that it's a good set of data now, these children received a three microgram double dose vaccine in their clinical trial. And that is a tenfold less of an mRNA compared to the adult dose. But the fact is this three microgram two dose series is not enough for children aged two to four. And that's why Pfizer is asking to do another dose and before submitting the EUA back in December. So the question is, are the antibody levels or the neutralizing antibody levels still a good indicator showing uh, the immunity against the COVID-19 uh, when all of the cases now are due to Omicron? And we know that the antibody levels dropped very quickly in adult and that drastically decreased the vaccine effectiveness, you know, after three to four months. And the CDC also repeatedly mentioned that the current versions of the mRNA vaccine are more designed to protect against hospitalizations and deaths rather than total immunity. And here is the question for Pfizer. Does Pfizer have enough sample size in their clinical trial to measure the effectiveness very confidently while hospitalizations are more rare in younger kids? Now trying to authorize two doses that doesn't work well enough means the FDA is expecting the third dose is going to work like a charm. Now, I don't know if they know the data already and Pfizer probably is still looking for that set of data and it would be at least a month before they get to see these early set of preliminary data. And so how do we weigh on benefit of the vaccine? Now with an authorization like this, it would allow some parents to have the option to vaccinate their children right away. And it is good to have options for these eager parents, which is about 31% according to one of the latest surveyed. Now while these parents would be very happy, okay, would be happy to give their, the vaccine to their children, 
the lack of robust vaccine benefit data is also likely to send a different signal to the rest of the parents. And most parents like myself are very cautious about benefit of the COVID vaccine in children. And I doubt the lack of evidence will generate a lot of interest in parents and or maybe worse, creating a lot of hesitancies in this case. Now, in the health science schools in the US, like the pharmacy students, the medical students, the nursing students, we all learned to how to examine clinical trial data during our school time. And one of the terms we used uh, to measure this effectiveness is called the number needed to treat. Okay, number needed to treat to prevent one case of disease or in our discussion here is the number needed to vaccinate to prevent one infection or to prevent one hospitalization. Now, Pfizer said hospitalizations of children under five due to COVID-19 have soared. Now the, the statement is not wrong. Children aged zero to four accounted for most of the COVID hospitalization case in children in January, but the number has also decreased sharply since the third week of January. And the CDC recorded total number of COVID hospitalization from age zero to four is 3,044 since the beginning of the pandemic. Can Pfizer or FDA tell us how many kids in this age group we need to vaccinate to prevent one hospitalization? Now, there are just so many questions just purely based on science. And we have been told to trust the science in this process. And now they're not showing us enough science. To wrap up this video, I want to be very clear. I am fully supportive of a safe and effective COVID-19 vaccine for our youngest children. And but we need solid evidence to support that decision. So far, we don't know what the evidence is. And I hope to see that in their discussion coming up uh, on February 15th. Now, not all of us can make a decision based on faith and in particular to have faith in Pfizer who doesn't have a good track record would be near impossible or very, very, very difficult. That is all for this midweek update and I hope to see you back here Sunday with a broader health science topic for our discussion. Now, meanwhile, please take good care and I'll see you Sunday. Bye.